If you want to lose weight for the last time, visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. Joey Hudson here. Welcome in to the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio and today's edition of Just a Truth. Former President Trump's outline of his position on abortion on Monday is still in the headlines with Trump getting pushed back from all directions, left, right, and center. We got the latest details on that. And in other Trump news, a New York appeals court denied President Trump's motion to delay what the media is referring to as the hush money trial, setting up jury selection as soon as next week. Before grabbing that hand sanitizer, take a look at the label. Several lots of hand sanitizer and a low gel are being recalled for containing methanol, which can put consumers at risk for serious health issues, according to federal health officials. And we have to give Joe Biden an A for persistence. Yesterday, President Biden announced another student loan plan that will potentially help millions of Americans have their debt forgiven in the latest attempt to provide relief to student loan borrowers. And, of course, your phone calls, your comments, 864-477-JOEY is the firm of Ford text line. Your comments are welcome, as well as your you can leave a quick voice message, emails directly to me, joey at joeyhudson.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. We talked yesterday that former President Trump declined to take a position on a potential federal abortion ban Monday and instead acknowledged the issue depends or should be left to the states. Most of us agree that was the right thing to do. However, TheHill.com wrote, Trump's lack of an explicit endorsement drew criticism from some on the right, including a prominent anti-abortion group, while Democrats said his position is unchanged and accused him of dodging the question. The video message shared early yesterday, I shared that uh, portions of that with you yesterday morning uh, from Truth Social, was President Trump's attempt to clarify his views on abortion after months of what some people said were unclear. Some even accused him of wavering on the issue. Trump, according to The Hill, has been flirting with endorsing a 15 or 16 week ban and has said for months that if elected, he would negotiate something that would make both sides happy. Of course, we know that that's not completely possible. We've also talked about how abortion has galvanized Democrats in the nearly two years since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Trump has struggled with whether to embrace or downplay his role in the decision. It needs to be noted, too, that there are many in the GOP who aren't quite sure how to respond either. This is one of those issues that we've got to learn how or decide how to deal with before we get too close to November. The reaction to his statement shows the political potency of abortion and how Trump's attempt to have it both ways could threaten, some believe, his chances in November. Uh, Doug Hay is a Republican strategist saying he clearly is trying to thread a needle that's very difficult to thread if it's even possible. Depending on who you talk to, he's trying to take a moderate stance on it or he's doing something that's not going to make anybody happy. The Hill writes in the roughly four-minute statement, Trump took credit for ending Roe and expressed support for certain exceptions, rape, incest, and to protect a mother's life. Trump argued Republicans ultimately must be able to win elections, brushing back calls from some groups for him to embrace a national ban and endorse a specific limit. Trump, in his statement, said, always go by your heart, but we must win. We have to win, obviously talking about the political ramifications of this issue. The president didn't specifically say he opposed a federal ban, but instead said that his view was that the states will determine by vote or legislation, or perhaps both, he said in his statement, and whatever they decide must be the law. He said the 50-year battle over Roe v. Wade took it out of the federal hands and brought it into the hearts, minds, and vote of the people in each state. It was really something. Now it's up to the states to do the right thing. Elisa Farrah Griffin, a one-time Trump White House communications director who is now a frequent critic of President Trump, called his approach smart, saying uh, on, uh, on X, that this allows him to punt on govs while maintaining conservative 
positions that it's up to the states. She said uh, that it was smarter than calling for a 15-week ban. Still, come, uh, some conservatives expressed disappointment that Trump did not go further. Trump's former vice president, Mike Pence, called the statement, quote, a slap in the face to the millions of pro-life Americans who voted for him in 2016 and in 2020. My, uh, our senior senator here in South Carolina, Lindsey Graham, who is a, t- a, tr- a, a top Trump ally in the Senate, and who has previously introduced a bill to ban abortion after 15 weeks, said he disagreed with the former president's position and would continue to advocate for a federal limit on abortions after 15 weeks, with exceptions, he said. In a statement, Senator Graham said, I respectfully disagree with President Trump's statement that abortion is is a state's right issue. Trump hit back at Graham pretty much immediately on Monday, saying the senator was doing a great disservice to the Republican Party and to our country by dem- giving Democrats fodder. You know, uh, Lindsey Graham has come under fire. Uh, he came under fire in the uh, midterm elections when prior to the midterms he he uh, introduced his idea of a 15-week federal ban. Trump continued, many good Republicans lost elections because of this issue, and people like Lindsey Graham that are unrelenting or handing Democrats their dream of the House, Senate, and perhaps even the presidency. You believe that's a, that's a, a clear statement. You think you think that this could this one issue of abortion could potentially cost us the White House and potentially a majority in in the Senate and the U.S. House. Eight six four four seven seven fifty six thirty nine is the firm of Ford Texan. I'd love to get your comments on that uh, that question. Susan B. Anthony, Pro Life America, which is a leading anti abortion group had been lobbying Trump, we're told, to endorse a 15-week ban and said it was deeply disappointed in Trump's announcement. Again, just another example of how he hasn't satisfied the right, uh, certainly not the left, and uh, some even in the center. Uh, In a sign of Trump's hold on the conservative base, according to The Hill, the group's president said it will work tirelessly, though, to defeat President Biden and extreme congressional Democrats, even though they're not happy with Trump's latest stance on abortion. Kristen Hawken, president of Students for Life of America, said it makes political sense for Trump to avoid staking out a federal position. In a post on X, Hawken said a 15- or 16-week ban is not good enough, and officially endorsing one would undermine the positions of states that have stricter policies. She wrote, Trump made the right call, and this leaves room for better action to be taken down the road. Students for Life is one of the coalition partners behind Project 2025, an effort helmed by the Heritage Foundation and former Trump administration officials to prepare policies and personnel who would be ready for day one of the next Trump administration or GOP administration. Uh, Obviously, Trump is the presumptive nominee. The group has outlined ways a future Trump administration can use executive authority and the levers of government to roll back access to abortion without involving Congress, including by undoing the approval of the common abortion medication, uh, Mifepristone. Uh, President Biden and his campaign were unequivocal Monday after hearing uh, Trump's announcement. Um, Officials dismissed any suggestion Trump was moderating on abortion or that he was backing away from a a potential federal ban. Biden said in a statement, let there be no illusion. If Donald Trump is elected and the MAGA Republicans in Congress put a national abortion ban on the resolute desk, Trump will sign it into law. Polling has shown abortion is one area where voters trust Biden more than Trump. A Wall Street Journal poll of swing state voters published just last week found that 45% of voters trust Biden more on the issue compared to 33% who prefer Trump. The campaign stressed that Trump was siding with the legislatures that have enacted severe, uh, very strict restrictions, uh, South Carolina being one of those, uh, Florida as well, on abortion access, pointing out that Trump is the reason states can decide that they want to ban abortion in the first place. And that is correct. Had Donald Trump not appointed the three conservative judges on the Supreme Court, we would have never celebrated the repeal of Roe v. Wade. The campaign stressed that Trump was siding uh, with the states 
and that the state's right route was the best. Biden campaign official said Trump is uh, still has not said how he would approach access to abortion medication. Despite seemingly endorsing states' rights, he hasn't specified how he will vote on a Florida ballot measure in November that would protect abortion access to the state. Of course, Trump will be voting on that as a resident and voter, registered voter in Florida. Democrat strategist Michael Starr Hopkins called out Trump's blatantly political calculations, according to, uh, according to The Hill saying Trump's comments show he is all over the place in terms of what he's willing to say. Donald Trump will be whoever he needs to be in the moment, and that is what makes him so dangerous, Hopkins said. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Love to get your feedback on the Furman Ford text line. In other Trump news yesterday, and there's always a lot because people are going after Donald Trump from all directions, A New York appeals court denied President Trump's motion to delay what the media is referring to as the hush money trial, setting up jury selection for as early as next week. Details on that in just a moment. First, let me talk with you about something kind of personal here, your weight. Did you step on the scales this morning and you just couldn't believe the number that popped up? I've done that before. So, you know, I've been there, done that. Thank goodness I made the call almost four years ago to Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. You can too, 864-252-4925. Write that down right now, 864-252-4925. Make the call, set up your initial consultation, and in just a matter of weeks, you can be talking about losing 10, 20, 30 pounds. It took me just a few months to lose the 30 pounds that I lost. And it has changed the way I look at food. I've been able to maintain that because, first off, this is not a diet, certainly not a fad diet. This is all about nutrition. And Dr. Ashley Lucas, the founder of PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, came up with this based on the science of nutrition. She teaches you about food, what to eat, when to eat, and how to eat. It will change your relationship with food. Therefore, give you the skills to be able to maintain the weight that you lose going forward in your life. If this sounds appealing to you, if you're ready to lose weight for the last time, visit them online at myphdweightloss.com or make that phone call today. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. A New York appeals court rejected former President Trump's motion to delay his trial on charges stemming from Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's hush money payments investigation. This is just another one of the assaults that Donald Trump is having to fight back. The former president and obviously the presumptive Republican presidential nominee is trying to delay the trial, which is set to begin with jury selection on April 15th of next week. He also sought to change the venue for the trial, asking that it be removed from New York so that he can get a fair trial. Trump's application to the New York Appellate Division First Department said that while jury selection is set to begin next week, quote, polling and quantitative analysis of media coverage shows that a fair and impartial jury cannot be selected right now based on prejudicial pretrial publicity. And boy, who can argue with that? Well, I'll tell you who can. The Honorable Elizabeth Gonzalez, who decided she's the judge who was hearing this. And on Monday uh, evening, last night, denied Trump's motion to the late trial with basically one sentence. Defendant's application for a stay of trial pending the determination of defendant's motion for change of venue is denied, she wrote. Last week, Manhattan Judge Juan Merchant who is presiding over the trial, denied Trump's bid for a delay. The former president had requested the trial be put on hold pending the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling on presidential immunity. And this could be a, a, a groundbreaking case if the Supreme or, or when the Supreme Court issues a decision. Arguments are set to be heard by the high court on the matter on April the 25th, with a ruling expected probably mid-June. Trump contends that he's immune from prosecution, for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office. His lawyers argue some of the evidence and alleged acts in the hush money case overlap with his time in the White House and constitute official acts. Last week, also, 
Trump and his attorneys filed a motion requesting Merchant be recused from the trial altogether due to Merchant's daughter, who's a Democrat-affiliated pol- uh, operative. She's, she's done a lot of work, a lot of political work, with Democrat-affiliated organizations. And Trump alleges that she has hostility against the 2024 presumptive Republican presidential nominee. Therefore, her dad cannot give Trump a fair trial. Merchant is the judge who also has imposed a gag order against Trump, which the former president's legal team is also fighting. This all started, of course, when Alvin Bragg last April charged President Trump with 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. The charges are related to alleged hush money payments made during the 2016 presidential campaign. D.A. Bragg alleged that Trump repeatedly and fraudulently falsified New York business records to conceal criminal conduct that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. Trump pleaded not guilty to all counts. So as if running for president is not hard enough, as if raising money to run that million-dollar, multi-million-dollar campaign, to travel around the country, to persuade the American people that his policies are best for them, Donald Trump's having to fight these legal woes as well. They're attacking him from multiple positions. How in the world he continues to do this. I have no idea. 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. Do you agree that, that all of these legal proceedings are politically motivated? Do you see any merit in any of these? If Donald Trump had not been president, if he weren't running again, do you think they would even care? about some of these issues that he's being uh, charged with and being persecuted on? Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. Several lots of hand sanitizer and aloe gel are being recalled for containing methanol, which can put consumers at risk for serious health issues, according to federal health officials. Details on that in, in just a moment after I talk with you about your new vehicle. If you're looking for a new vehicle or, or maybe a pre-owned vehicle that you can trust to get your family from point A to point B. You're going to go on that summer vacation and you want something dependable. Head over to, to Lawrence and let me introduce you to Jim Furman and Matthew Furman at Furman Ford. They do business the right way. Their name is on the sign because they understand their name is on the line with every single transaction. That means dealing with you as well. Give them a call. You can send them an email, or better yet, just stop by the, the dealership, and you're always going to have access to a member of the Furman family. I love doing business with locally owned businesses and local and, and family-operated uh, businesses, and that's what you get with Furman Ford. When you drive your new vehicle off the lot, you're going to have the satisfaction of knowing that your money is staying right here in the upstate and not off to some corporate headquarters somewhere because Furman Ford is owned and operated right here locally by the Furman Ford family. Let me encourage you to visit them. You can find them online at FurmanFord.com. Check out all their inventory, FurmanFord.com. If you need service on your existing vehicle, they got you covered there as well. FurmanFord.com. In the thick of COVID, I don't know that I had ever washed my hands as often as I did. You, you remember those days? And, and I still do now. I mean, uh, you know, I was taught very early on by my mom <laughs> to always wash my hands. I remember vividly in the first grade at Victor Elementary School in Greer. School building's no longer there, but some, some of you who maybe have lived in the upstate for a while, you remember Victor Mill and Victor Elementary School. I, I vividly remember Miss Howell who was my first grade teacher making the boys in the class because she felt like we had not washed our hands properly before we went to lunch. She made all of us go to the boys restroom and practice washing our hands. I don't know why that sticks out. You have, do you have memories sometimes like that, that, that 
from your childhood or previously that just really stick out in your mind? I mean, I can see us standing there, washing our hands to this day. I can visualize what the, 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 the boys' restroom looked like. And, and walking out and stepping down the steps to a lower level to go back to our classroom. I kind of had flashbacks during COVID as we needed to wash our hands frequently. And I remember jokingly saying, we're going to eventually find out that some of these sanitizers are bad for our health. They may cause cancer or something like that. Well, it's no joking matter as some sanitizers are now being recalled. Now, they're not suggesting that they cause cancer. That was me sort of joking, so don't don't write that down. <laughs> the recall affects 40 lots of Aruba Aloe hand sanitizer gel alcohol and Aruba Aloe Alcoholidae, 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 got to get that right, gel, which contains alcohol denatured and methanol, according to a notice posted by the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA warned in the recent recall that substantial methanol exposure can cause nausea, vomiting, headache, blurred vision, coma, seizures, permanent blindness, as well as permanent damage to the central nervous system or death. Customers are being told to stop using the products and to throw them out. Aruba Aloe Bomb NV's affected hand sanitizer gel is packaged in a 12 ounce dark green plastic bottle, has white labels reading in part Aruba Aloe uh, hand sanitizer on it. It's made in Aruba World's Finest Aloe. Aruba Aloe Bomb is voluntarily recalling 40 lots of their hand sanitizer gel alcohol, 80% gel. The Aruba Aloe uh, Alcoholata, which is used for temporary relief of pain and itching associated with minor burns, sunburn, insect bites, or minor skin irritations, is packaged in two sizes, 2.2 ounces of plastic bottles and 8.5 ounce plastic bottles as well. The bottles are transparent with labels that read in part, Alcoholata Gel Pain Relieving Gel. During the pandemic, the FDA created a list of over 600 potentially dangerous hand sanitizers after discovering an uptick in the number of sanitizers that had been made with methanol rather than approved ethanol alcohol. Methanol is commonly used in industrial settings, but it's not safe for use on the skin. It's also dangerous if it's ingested. The notice said, although all persons using these products on their hands are at risk, young children who accidentally ingest these products and adolescents and adults who drink these products as an alcohol ethanol substitute are most at risk for methanol poisoning. Aruba Aloe Bomb NV has not gotten any reports, they say, of adverse related uh, effects to these products. According to the notice, the affected products were distributed between May 1st of 2021 and October 7th this past fall, 2023, and sold in the United States online through Aruba Aloe Bomb NV's website. The company notified customers who were impacted by the recall and offered a discount coupon for their next purchase. I don't know that I'm going to be purchasing anything else from a company like that, are you? 864-477-5639 is the firm and Ford text line. Your comments are welcome. Uh, on the text line, Susan text uh, a, a meme that is circulating. I'd seen it on other social media sites. Susan texts me a copy of it, a photo of it. It's a photo of Donald Trump that says, if Trump was guilty of half the things he's accused of, he could run as a Democrat. <laughs> Again, it's been widely distributed. Thank you, Susan, for sending us a, uh, a, a brief laugh there. Unfortunately, if this weren't serious, uh, you'd want to cry rather than laugh, right? Because uh, it, it's the truth. Ray writes, uh, good morning, Joey. I have a question. Who enforces the Supreme Court rulings? Mr. Biden has been told by SCOTUS that he cannot cancel student loan debt, and yet he just did it again. Who is the enforcement arm of the court? Only a true dictator can ignore court rulings. If the answer is DOJ, we are done for because Crooked Joe owns the DOJ. It was a great country while it lasted, thankfully, God is still in control. And you're right, Ray. Uh, God is still in control. And look, yes, it is 
it's, it's, it's a bit fusing, confusing. It's frustrating that you have an administration like this who has no respect for the rule of law. He has openly said he's trying to, to figure out a workaround around the court's ruling that he cannot forgive student loan debt. He cannot give more of our money away, but he keeps trying. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you got to give him an A for persistence. I'm going to tell you all about this, uh, this plan that uh, Joe Biden proposed yesterday in just a moment. Faye in a, uh, sent me a link to the Daily Caller article about further speculation that George Soros may be thinking of trying to control conservative media. Soros fund, the headlines is uh, from the, uh, uh, the Daily Caller, Soros Fund sets its sights on a new target, America's airwaves. Faye, I appreciate you sending me this link. Uh, it, it reads, an investment firm founded by billionaire George Soros is looking to ramp up its influence over a key slice of American broadcasting. Soros Fund Management, which is controlled by Open Society Foundations, has made multiple high-profile media acquisitions over the past two years, and according to source. Sources familiar who spoke with Semaphore is in discussions to purchase even more. Roughly one-third of all media consumed in the United States is in the form of audio, and about half of Americans still listen to the radio when traveling in their cars. And, of course, you and I, if you're listening today, you like podcasts. You listen to podcasts. It's it's one of the fastest-growing forms of audio as well. George Soros wants to control podcast networks. OSF, which is a network of nonprofits Soros uh, laid the groundwork for in 1984, has spent billions since funding left-of-center organizations across the globe, according to its website. Soros himself poured more than $32 billion into his philanthropy since 1984. The Soros Network's recent string of media purchases began in 2022, when Soros Fund Management invested an undisclosed amount into Crooked Media, a liberal podcast network, this according to Variety. Crooked Media hosts dozens of highly trafficked podcasts, with Pod Save America, for instance, being the fifth most popular news show on Apple Podcast. Soros Fund Management's investment bought it at a seat, uh, bought itself a seat on the podcast network's board, and according to the founders of the company may be used by Crooked to fund acquisitions, according to Variety. Soros Fund Management does not hold a majority stake in Crooked Media yet. Crooked Media wasn't Soros's only foray into audio in 2022. The uh, Daily Caller goes on to write, Lake Star Finance, an investment firm where Soros Fund Management serves as the principal investment manager, also financed Latino media network 60 million purchases of 18 Spanish-language radio stations operating across the country, including the conservative radio Mambi in Florida. Some of the Spanish-speaking radio hosts impacted by the purchase left their shows, according to sources, citing editorial disagreements. This in the New York Post. The Soros Network's most recent move into audio came in February recently, when Soros Fund Management acquired over $400 million, and we've talked about this before, owed by Odyssey, the nation's second largest network of radio stations. The debt has since been converted into equity as part of the corporate restructuring plan, making Soros Fund Management one of Odyssey's largest shareholders. Three people who have been involved in discussions with Soros executives say that these acquisitions could be a part of a larger push to cement control over audio-based media, according to Semaphore. Soros Fund Management, for instance, has privately discussed acquiring Cumulus Media, another radio network, that operates 403 networks and reaches a quarter of a billion people every month. And I got to tell you, Cumulus owns a lot of conservative talk radio stations uh, and programming as well. Soros Fund Management is also considering multiple podcast companies for acquisition, according to Semaphore. The Soros Network's involvement in media stretches beyond podcast and radio Courier Newsroom, a network of websites that present as local news outlets but push pro-Democrat articles, has received millions of dollars in support from the Soros Philanthropic Network. OSF and left-wing Swiss billionaire 
Hanjor Weiss also reportedly financed the acquisition of nearly two dozen local newspapers in Maine recently. Soros' philanthropies have pumped millions into local and nonprofit news operations over the past year. Soros' son, Alex, became chair of the OSF, which controls the family investment firm, in December of 2022. Alex Soros has described himself as more political than his father. Take note of that. He's admitting that he's more political than his father, if that's possible. Soros Fund Management did not immediately respond to Daily Caller News Foundation's request for comment. Just uh, food for thought. The good news is George Soros will never own just a truth. That's why I have remained independent with my podcast, because we're growing our own community. That's why it's important for you to right now share today's episode of Just a Truth with Five friends, 10 friends, 20 friends. Send it to your entire contact list. Many of you do that, and thank you for that. But that's why it's important for us to build our own network so that we can communicate with one another. So take a moment, pause the the, the podcast. That's what I love about podcasts. It's on your own time. And, and, And share this with someone right now. Our text of encouragement today from Joel. This is a scripture from John 16.33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Thank you, Joel. God bless. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. You can send your comments to the Furman Ford text line. So as mentioned in uh, a couple of those text messages, President Biden announced a student loan plan yesterday that will help potentially millions of Americans have their debt forgiven in his latest attempt to provide relief to borrowers and, in my view, buy votes in November. Got the details for you after I talked with you about that refrigerator that went out on you over the weekend. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, located in Pickens. If you need a new refrigerator, New dishwasher, washer, dryer. Boy, uh, they are very proud that they offer Speed Queen. They're the only washer and dryers with up to a seven-year warranty on parts and labor. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they take service seriously and personally. They make you part of the family. You're not just a credit card swipe with Discounted Appliance Warehouse. And if you're tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff who have absolutely no appliance knowledge, Discounted Appliance Warehouse is, is for you. They'll help you navigate all the options, the brands, the features, because appliances are not inexpensive. They, they can, uh, it's a big purchase, and you can't afford to get it wrong. They'll show you around the warehouse. It's about 11,000 square feet, and it's packed with new appliances, and they'll help you find the best solution for you, your budget, and your family. They have extended warranties. They have you covered well past the sale, as I mentioned, and you'll just love doing business with them. Head on over to Pickens, the Discounted Appliance Warehouse, or online at dawpickens.com. Quite the extensive program that the Biden administration unveiled yesterday. He announced a plan, again, I give him A for persistence. This plan is focused in large part on borrowers who have the so-called runaway interest who owe more money than they did at the start of the repayment. The plan, if finalized, would likely go into effect this fall, but at risk, of course, being legally challenged by Republicans who don't back student debt relief that could add to the millions of people who have already seen some debt relief under Joe Biden's uh, executive plans. Here's a few things you need to know. First off, how many people could be affected? How, How many borrowers impacted? The plan potentially could give relief to 25 million borrowers who owe more money than they did at the start of repayment because of the interest rate on federal student loans. If the uh, plan is finalized, it would cancel up to $20,000 of the amount a borrower's balance has grown because of unpaid interest, regardless of their income level. The new plan would cancel the total amount of a borrower's balance, which has grown, again, due to unpaid interest, 
if the borrower is enrolled in the SAVE plan or other income-driven loan forgiveness programs. According to the, uh, to the White House, it aims to forgive interest balances built up to date for 25 million borrowers and 20, with 23 million likely to have all of their balance growth forgiven. Just with a stroke of a pen, it's gone. It would also give relief to borrowers enrolled in low financial value education programs that have been deemed insufficient by the Department of Education. These are borrowers who are experiencing hardship in paying back the loan, such as those at high risk of defaulting and families who say they're burdened with other types of debt, like medical debt. If the plans are finalized, the administration is aiming to implement it as early as, surprise, 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 the fall of 2024, just prior to the election. The White House has argued that runaway interest is part of a broken system of student loan debt, and the administration has aimed to provide automatic debt relief of borrowers who qualify under the SAVE plan and other programs. Now, i got to say, I, I have mixed feelings about this. If you have listened to me for any length of time, you know that typically I'm not very fond of the student loan debt programs. I believe that if you borrow money, it's real simple. You pay it back. That's what my mom and dad taught me. You may have heard me tell the story. My dad uh, used this as a learning experience. I wanted a dirt bike. I was probably, I don't know, 11, 12 years old. And I wanted this dirt bike so badly because my next door neighbor, Scotty Cannon, had one. I wanted one. But I didn't have the money to buy it. My dad took me to the local, I think it was called Banker's Trust at the time, downtown Greer. And I'm sure he had it prearranged, but I, I went in, sat down with a loan officer. I was kind of scared. <laughs> he asked me a few questions. He loaned me the money that I needed. I don't remember the exact amount, but it, it was not, wasn't a lot of money. I mean, this was back in the probably late 60s, early 70s. Um, it was probably less than $1,000. And he came up with a plan, loaned me the money. I got my dirt bike. And I got my coupon book. Remember the coupon book before everything went digital? They gave you uh, the bank gave you a, a coupon book that had a a stub that you pay, that you uh, tore out each time you made a payment. I was driven, driven to get rid of that coupon book. Everything I could do, every time, I, any opportunity I had to work, and and as I mentioned, my my next door neighbor Scotty Cannon, his dad Virgil own cannons in downtown Greer. Still there today. His grandson runs it. If you want to want some good food, go to Cannons in Greer. That, that was my first job. I worked anytime Virgil would let me work to make some extra money so that I could pay another one of those coupons. So I, I, I just have that. That's my mentality. If you borrow money, you pay it back any way you can. You, you figure out a way to do it. Now, with that being said, I understand. I've, I've read some horror stories of some people who have student loans that because of the interest rate, they're, 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 they're paying back a whole lot more than they borrowed. Now, that's typical. Look at your mortgage. You know, uh, if you've ever looked at your mortgage amortization table, uh, you pay back a, the, the first, if it's a 30-year loan, first 10-plus years, you're paying all interest pretty much. You don't pay back more than you paid for the house, but it's pretty close. That's the whole idea. I mean, that, that that's the banks and financial institutions. That's how they make their money. So I guess I would agree that there is space for a, a federal program that students who need the money could borrow the money and it could be affordable for them to pay back, but not with the idea that we're just going to give it to them. If you were listening closely a minute ago when I was telling you about some of the uh, the uh, some of the part of this program, it doesn't matter what your income is. So potentially you could have doctors and lawyers, high income individuals who just haven't paid their their student loans back, and the interest has been accruing. Now they're complaining about it. 
Uh, the White House admitted that legal challenges are probably likely. Corinne Jean-Pierre, uh, during her uh, press conference yesterday, said, we know that Republicans are going to do that. We can't stop them from that, but it's also not going to stop the president from acting and taking action like he is today. Now, they know that it's going to be challenged, and that's part of the political process. Joe Biden really doesn't care about canceling those student loans. He wants to position himself to where Republicans challenge this, this, this uh, move so that Republicans are the bad guys. And that's exactly what the Biden administration and the Biden campaign will do. They're going to make Republicans uh, to, to these 25 million students out there. Many of them, uh, well, they're not students now. They're, they're, they're working, hopefully, working to pay back their loans. But Joe Biden's intent is he doesn't care about them. He wants to make this a political issue. He wants to, to get lo- headlines like he has already that the Republicans, that those bad, the boogeyman, they don't, they don't want to, um, they don't want you to, 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 to do this debt forgiveness. They want you to have to pay those loans back that you took out, that you agreed to do. Now, you may also remember, and this is in reference to the text message I got, I think it was from Ray, who was asking, well, who enforces a Supreme Court ruling? The administration officials told reporters the plan is consistent with the Supreme Court's decision last June that blocked Biden's broad student loan forgiveness. Basically, they studied the, the, the decision by the court and tried to, tried to come up with a plan that can get around that. When the high court blocked the plan, it ruled that Congress had not authorized the executive branch to forgive the debts that are estimated to be at hundreds of billions of dollars. Justices at the time expressed doubt about the Education Department's authority to unilaterally forgive debt. The administration attempted to justify the plan by tying it to the national emergency established during the public health crisis of COVID. The officials uh, said about the new plan, the plan involves different considerations by providing targeted relief to bars with particular circumstances. This isn't the same plan, and we feel confident going forward. If finalized, again, it would mean that more than 30 million borrowers have received student debt relief during the Biden administration. Biden has provided debt relief for 4 million borrowers, which uh, equaled $146 billion in student debt through executive actions, including making fixes to the public service loan forgiveness program. He canceled loans for more than 150,000 borrowers enrolled in the SAVE programs, which is a repayment plan he launched to help borrowers have as low as $0 payments on their loans. Overall, almost 8 million borrowers have enrolled in the SAVE plan. 4.5 million have a monthly payment of 0 under the plan, and 1 million have a monthly payment of less than $100. He is seeking the Supreme Court workaround. The plan would have canceled uh, up to $20,000 in, in loans for Pell Grants, and 10000 for other bars if the individual's income is less than 125000 Part of that was struck down by the Supreme Court. Now, here's the reason this is all happening. According to The Hill, the plan could energize young voters. Bingo. Student loan forgiveness is top of the mind for many voters, especially young people who Biden needs to attract ahead of November. Biden has faced a lack of enthusiasm with young Americans, according to The Hill. A lot of these young people have concerns that Biden is too old for another term. They disagree with him on policy issues, or they're not happy that the 2024 race is a rematch of 2020. Young people have been particularly upset with Biden in recent months over his pro-Israel stance and his handling of the war in Gaza. The push for voters to cast a boycott ballot rather than voting for Biden in the Democrat primary resonated the most with young voters in states, including Michigan, where we saw protests, by the way, over the weekend in, in, uh, uh, in some of those heavily uh, populated areas with people who are pro-Palestine. Washington, Minnesota, and Massachusetts, which had the highest concentration of protest votes in the area where young people live. The latest student loan plan would deliver relief for Americans early this fall, Again, just weeks ahead of the general election. Some uh, analysts 
believes that that could give Biden the boost that he needs with young people. Biden traveled to Madison, Wisconsin yesterday to announce the plan in a key swing state where he, the, uh, that he won in 2020. While there, he also is, uh, was expected to meet with borrowers who have benefited so far from the administration's work on forgiving student loan debts. Again, it's real simple, folks. It's called vote buying. It's legal, I guess, if you're sitting in the Oval Office and you can sign executive uh, orders like he's trying to do. We can only hope that, yes, the American people who are footing the bill, ultimately somebody pays that. Joe Biden and the federal government can wipe away those interest loans, and you may be a recipient of that, and you may think, God, oh, this is great. I'm going to have my, my student loan that, I, that is hard for me to pay back. It's going to be wiped out. This, the federal government is going to get their money from you eventually. It may not be through student loan payments, but somebody has to pay it. So you may get a, 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 another job. You may get, get into a higher income. You're going to pay more federal taxes because eventually it has to be repaid. And you're going to be part of that. You, your, your whole family, your whole working family is going to have to help pay for your student loans. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Hey, I appreciate you joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time. Visit myphdweightloss.com. Uh, join my mailing list at joeyhudson.com. Just click on Connect with Joey so that you can receive our emails and get the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search for Joey Hudson. Uh, I, I posted a little something of Peg and me watching the eclipse yesterday did you watch the, the eclipse we didn't even talk about, have time to talk about that today uh what, what go to youtube and uh, search for joey hudson and, and see the video peg and i made we only had one pair of glasses <laughs> somehow uh, and look thanks to my sister-in-law patty king uh, we that's how we got the one pair i went out scrambling around yesterday to try to find more glasses you couldn't buy a pair of solar eclipse glasses anywhere yesterday so Peg and I are sitting in our backyard out by the barn sharing this pair of, of glasses to watch the eclipse yesterday. Go to YouTube, watch it. I uh, appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. I know you have choices. Thank you for choosing to be a part of Just the Truth. Uh, coming up uh, later this morning, 9 a.m. To, to 12 noon, I'll be hosting the Mike Gallagher Show as Mike is in Japan on vacation. So uh, you can watch at michaelonline.com or at the Salem News Channel, snc.tv. Join me 9 until noon for the Mike Gallagher Show. Keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY, and keep those emails coming as well, joey at joeyhudson.com. We're back again tomorrow. I hope you'll plan to be with us. Until then, remember, God's got this. He's still in control.